everyone welcome back to another video today i will be showing you some tips and tricks i've learned from my experience with taming your reptile your lizard to be more exact i have jewel lacertas as the example today and i feel like they're a good example because a lot of people know them as being skittish and difficult to tame but also i was asked to make this video by one of you guys so thank you so much for that of course, most people who get a pet lizard are wanting to be able to have a bond with them and wanting to be able to spend time with them and hold them. So when people get a lizard and they're skittish or they don't let them hold them or go near them, it can be really disappointing. So I want to give you some advice and try to help you out if that's you. And also some people think having a friendship with a lizard or any sort of crawling creature is impossible and so I'm here to show you that you really can have a bond with your lizard. <laughs> you okay? That's gonna be a lot to clean up. So when it comes to taming your lizard, there's a lot of different factors to keep in mind, like the age of your lizard, the origin of how you got it, if it was wild caught or captive bred, and also the species. Um, the age, typically, the younger the lizard, the more afraid of humans it will be just naturally. And the older, it's probably going to be a little bit easier, um, unless it's wild caught. If you get a wild caught animal, it's just going to be a lot harder just because of how they were never domesticated. And so you're going to have to be doing a little bit more work and have more patience. And then also with species, like I was saying earlier about jeweled lacertas, there are species like these jewelies that just tend to be a little bit more frightened. Um, so yeah, those are some things to keep in mind. So to start, I'll be going over tweezer training, and this is already very well known, and a lot of people already tweezer train their lizards, but I just thought I'd start with it because it's very basic and not hard to teach your lizard in most cases. So you can see Safira is already over here because she saw me messing with the feeder insect uh, containers. They're very smart and learn when food is coming very quickly. So a thing I like to do with my lizards is put my fist out like this and just let them smell my hand so they know, you know, it's me and it's not food. Because occasionally if I just go ahead and put my hand right in the enclosure, they might come over and think my fingers are worms or whatever. And so this just kind of avoids any confusion like that. And it's also a good way to introduce your scent to your lizards and get them comfortable with being around you. Of course, some lizards won't let you put your hand anywhere near them. So this won't work for everyone. But basically with tweezer training, what you're doing is you are associating yourself with the idea of feeding. And of course, reptiles love to eat. And so that's a good feeling. So you want to be having positive experiences associated with you. Some people just feed their reptiles by throwing some worms into a dish which works but it can also kind of keep that independent mindset where they don't want to be near you or have anything to do with you when you tweezer train you are just spending time with your reptile and that that's really good if your lizard is like hiding all the time or you just never see it around you can always try just getting some sort of insect on the tweezers and putting it in front and seeing if it has a response. This won't always work, but if you just, um, if you're just patient and gradually just continue doing that, you could have some results. And some people think tweezer training isn't necessary, but like I said, I'm just sharing my experience with you and what I do personally. It's also a good thing if you're able to um, kind of persuade your lizard to come closer to you like I'm doing here because again it's just kind of getting them comfortable with being near you.
So the one to the left, that's Barnaby, the male Druid Lacerda I was telling you about. I've had him for the same amount of time as Saphir, but he's always been a little bit more afraid of me. And so you can see I'm trying to just kind of see if he can interact with me at all. I'm trying to pet him here and you can see he just doesn't want me to. And another thing to keep in mind is to just respect what they want. And as you just saw, he did not want me touching him. So instead of chasing him around the enclosure, I just let him be. You always want to end things on a positive note. Safira here is totally good with me petting her. And I always stop petting her before she gets tired of it. Really a big thing is just being around your lizard and trying to just show them that you aren't scary. Just move slow with them, like respect them and don't do anything that makes them uncomfortable. And I'm trying to kind of address the situation of if your lizard is hiding all the time because that can happen. In that sort of situation, um, like I said earlier, it's it could be a good idea if you could kind of persuade them to come out of their hiding place using food, and then through that, just kind of keep doing that, and they'll gradually, hopefully, be able to be coming closer to you and all that. But yeah, that's all I'll be going over tweezer training with taming, and now I'll be talking about just being around your lizard, just having them in your presence. I notice that anytime I walk up to their cage or I move anything in their enclosure, they usually get a little bit nervous and sometimes will go and run to their hiding place, which is okay. But it shows me that they're just kind of uneasy with me being around. So I notice it kind of helps if you're able to just anytime you're moving things around like this, like sometimes I'll go in their cage and I'll fix something that they knocked over. Anytime you do that, just see how they respond to that and see how close you could get to them without them getting scared. And really, if you're doing stuff in their cage enough without stressing them out, you don't wanna be like invading their safe space. But if you're able to do this without stressing them out, it can really help them get used to you being around, which can help lead to the next step, which is handling. Usually if I ever change the soil or if I'm ever digging around looking for eggs from Safira, um, she'll come up to me and just smell my hand and she's very sweet with it and seems to like me to be doing things around the cage. Barnaby is still a little bit uneasy about it, but he's coming around. And if I move slowly enough and just kind of stay away from him, he's totally good with it. It's kind of just working on their terms and letting them come to you as much as possible, and that can really help. Of course, taming is kind of a process. There's not really a way I know of that, it, that can make it happen in just a few days. I mean, it's gonna be some time that you're gonna have to take, and it's just building trust between you and your lizard. So before I try to handle them, I'll usually feed some sort of treat before trying to pick them up. Really the most stressful part is trying to pick them up because you're trying not to scare them, but also you need to be able to grab them and you know take them out of the cage. So this is the part where you can kind of mess up because if you scare them too much, they will try to distance themselves from you even more. So that's why it's it could be kind of a process. So I'll try to show you what I do with Barnaby here, who like I said before, he doesn't like to be held, so I'll show you what I do. Hey Barnaby, it's okay. Okay, sweetie. So 
Okay, baby. It's okay. So that went well. He's just wanting to go back in the cage. This is kind of not an enjoyable process um, when it comes to picking them up out of the enclosure. But he's kind of hanging out now and usually reptiles enjoy the heat that your body gives off. So they'll just kind of hang out. He's doing really good right now. And when they're out of the enclosure, just moving slow and keeping them near their cage usually makes them feel safer. And over time, the more I handle him, the more he's gonna get used to being handled and eventually he might even start enjoying it the way Safira does. All these tips that I've been sharing with you, each of them individually could take time on their own. This isn't meant to be like a step-by-step -step sort of video where you just like do all of this in one day. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a process like I've been saying, you could start by just trying to tweezer feed for a few weeks, then move on to, you know, doing stuff in the enclosure as well. You can kind of do both of those things together of just being around your lizard and also tweezer feeding, but the whole handling part will probably come later in the process. Then letting them go back in the enclosure when they want to is also important to making them feel safe through the entire process. But yeah, that's kind of how it goes. Those are the three basics to taming that I've found usually work. Of course, every lizard is different and there are so many different factors that can go into it. But I hope that what I've told you today can help you out. And even if just one tip kind of helped, that would be great. Don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it. Comment if you have anything to say. Um, I'll try to answer any possible questions in the comments. But yeah, I'll see you in the next video.